Disney Channel always has good stuff. But we have busy lives and different tastes. Disney has created three extra channels at no extra cost. And indeed they did. In September 2000, Disney launched Playhouse Disney, Toon Disney and Disney Channel Plus One, a one hour time shift channel. TV was great in the old days. For myself, the best time for children's TV ranged from 2003 to 2010, and a fair bit of credit goes to Toon Disney. That channel has always been my favourite. Sure, I watched regular Disney and occasionally Playhouse Disney in the early days, but Toon Disney was the winner in my eyes. Not only was it the only 24-hour channel of the four, but it also had what I was looking for, 24 hours worth of cartoons, and there were a lot of them. Between 2000 and 2006, I was a regular viewer of Lilo and Stitch, DuckTales, House of Mouse, Fillmore, Timon and Pumbaa, Goof Troop, Recess, Buzz Lightyear, 101 Dalmatians, American Dragon, and one of my favourite cartoons of all time, Kim Possible. Oh yes. That's what I want to talk about today. I discovered Kim Possible on a late night in 2004. Nothing was on, I couldn't sleep, I had the living room TV to myself, late night Cartoon Network wasn't working for me and wouldn't truly be working for another year or so. So I gave it a go, and I actually began to like it. Kim Possible is an average teenage girl struggling to balance her school life and her hectic personal life. Standard kids stuff, you know. The only difference here is that Kim is an internationally famous superhero often called upon to foil the plans of Dr. Draken, Shigo, Duff Killigan, Monkey Fist, and the father and son duo of Senior, 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 and Junior, just to name a few. And that's just the superhero side of her. There's still her personal life. At home, she's resisting the urge to strangle her brothers on a daily basis. At school, she's able to juggle responsibilities as captain of the cheerleading squad, as well as a million other activities, all the while maintaining constant high grades. I can't say how, but the show clicked for me in a way Ed, Ed, Neddy, Billy and Mandy and Tom and Jerry clicked with me. It's hard to explain precisely, all you know is that you just want to keep watching as much as possible. Without even hesitating, I can safely say Kim Possible easily is one of my top 5 cartoons of all time. It's up there with Ed, Ed Neddy, The Grim Adventures of Billy and Mandy, Sonic Boom and Tom and Jerry. And as with everything in Video Memories, there were home video releases. What we have here is a recent discovery. I picked it up many years ago, but only recently discovered it in my old house. There was something else I found, but it's irrelevant right now. So this is Kim Possible The Secret Files from 2003. This DVD holds four of the show's 87 episodes. Attack of the Killer Babies, Downhill, Coach Possible and Crush, all from season one, as well as a music video for the song Say the Word from the episode Hidden Talent. The Region 1 DVD substitutes Coach Possible for the Season 2 episode Partners, this episode being DVD exclusive until aired on TV in March 2004, six months after this DVD's release. Is it a good DVD? If you're happy with just four episodes, then I'd say hell yes. Even with just four, it's still guaranteed to entertain. But how well does this series hold up when compared to other content from Disney? Well, let's put it this way. Last year, I purchased the entire series, bar the movie, so the drama, on Amazon Prime, and spent a month re-watching everything, and the show has edged tremendously. It was better than I ever remember it being. It was exhausting, sure, but when you love a TV show, binge-watching can't hurt. Unless, of course, it's Breaking Bad, or Walking Dead, or 24, or Two and a Half Men, or How I Met Your Mother. In fact, anything with more than five seasons. In that case, it drains you and you never want to rewatch the entire show again. Kim Possible, on the other hand, I will happily rewatch all the way through and is probably the only Disney show I will ever say that about. American Dragon and Fillmore and Recess have their places out there. They're all still really good, but they don't have the humour and charm that Kim has. If I'm brutally honest, Kim Possible has aged better than pretty much any cartoon I've ever seen, and I've seen a lot in the past 25 years. It's easily in my top 3 for animation TV shows. Yeah, it's moving up from top 5. Obviously, it will never hit the heights of The Edge, my favourite cartoon of all time, but it could easily take the spot for second favourite. You know, there is one thing Kim Possible has in common with The Edge. There's a painful lack of home media releases for both shows. With The Eds, we have two complete seasons and two highlights DVDs, each with only six episodes. 
With Kim, we have the two movies, A Sitch in Time and So the Drama, and two compilation DVDs, The Secret Files and The Villain Files. The first two seasons are available only from Disney Movie Club, but from what I've seen, registration for that club is a nightmare and a half, so it's hardly worth it. I may already have the entire series on Amazon Prime, but as far as I'm concerned, it's a crime that this series, one of the most popular Disney cartoons of all time, has not had a physical release for the entire series. I don't care how pricey it is, I paid 75 quid for the entire series on Amazon. I would happily pay for a complete series box set for either Kim or the Eds. The Eds especially since the Amazon Prime options are not only more expensive, but also vastly incomplete. So what I'm basically saying here is Kim Possible is great, one of the absolute best. This on the other hand, 